Welcome back once again. My name is Mark Moyer. You're in the club room brought to you by Win Again. Today, I am absolutely uh, excited and um, intrigued and lots of other big words that I'm not going to say now um, because I've got Michael Verbeek in the house and he's uh, uh, really such a fantastically interesting guy. He was born and raised in Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, really what's interesting is that he was a world-class cyclist. I mean, absolute, you know, when you're, when you're a world-class cyclist, I mean, you're in amazing shape, right? He was captain though, came here and he became captain of Team Spago, um, which was sponsored by Wolfgang Puck. I don't know if that means that Mr. Puck was offering them like free massive amounts of pasta at the end of the race. I'm assuming that was the case. Um, but also he's uh, all about staying fit, using exercise, diet, and a few other things that we'll be talking about in a few minutes. Um, I know that he works with the Navy SEALs and has worked with them. I, he's um, also um, partnered with Diane Hayworth and their company is called um, A Longer Healthy Life. He's an expert in longevity and you're gonna hear all about that shortly. I think I've said enough because he's got lots more things he can talk about, but I'm gonna bring you in right now, Michael. Thanks so much for joining us today from um the really nice part of the country um lucky him all right michael where are you right now exactly i'm sitting in uh, san diego san diego I'm, uh, yeah i'm a little, uh, about 35 minutes from downtown san diego and uh, um yeah i live on a, on a private lake so it's 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 a nice nice environment now i haven't yeah, asked you this and and i and i i regret not having asked you but um do you surf at all no, I specifically stayed away from surfing. I lived five years uh, um, on the Strand in Manhattan Beach, so I literally heard the waves crashing in. But I knew that if I was going to get, if I got hooked on that, that would be a, a time-consuming sport. So, what, and I'm the kind of person when I when I involve myself in something, I'm all I'm all in. I'm not a toe dipper, so I I stayed away from that one. Smart man. I tried it once and nearly drowned. So I said, well, you know what? That's uh. I, I figured maybe I'll leave it to the experts. So I, I, I like solid ground, you know, versus the, uh, <laughs> the mysteries of the ocean. But uh, well, look, I wanted to start off by a quote that I heard from you earlier today that I thought was really interesting because I'd never, I'd never heard it before. And the quote was, you said, we only have one home. We need to protect it. And, you know, I think most people, when they hear that, they say, well, wait, I've got three homes. I've got, no, what are you talking about? Well, uh, so for me, like my, my passion, of course, is uh, longevity and uh, having been to uh, 67 countries and traveled around the world and uh, spent most of my time with people that are over um, 100 years of age. Um, it's once you once you meet a person that's uh, 110 and they hold, their hand, they hold your hand or they sing you a song and it just moves the, the needle of belief. Right? And uh, again, um, there, there was a time when Bannister hadn't broken the four minute mile and yeah. everybody, the belief was, oh, that's not possible. Uh, I think today over 10,000 uh, have, have broken the four minute mile, right? And that's, that's so, so again, uh, in, in that same realm, in respect to quality of life and lifespan, um, uh, I've, I've seen it, you know, numerous times here. So. I've seen it again and again and again that uh, you know your your home, which obviously is your body. Yeah. Uh, we only have one of those, but uh, you better take care of it because it's built it's built to see three digits. Like, so just like Dan was talking about, uh, he he, uh, he he specializes in mistakes. Like right? it's 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 basically primarily it's mistakes and it's 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 choices that takes you out of the game. Right and. We make choices every day, um, so it's it's a matter of understanding uh, and conceptualize what, what what how do I how do I fit this into my frame of work? It doesn't matter what you where you are in the world or what you do. I, I've I've been you know as I say I've been all over the world. I've been to I think I've been to Okinawa fourteen times. Like so so as through my travels, uh, it's it's not one thing necessarily right there's a set of, of, of mark parameters that you have to follow it's like a checklist and if you can if you do that checklist and you do it every day then uh you're you're, you're in the game granted i go out more i get hit by a car and 
I'm, I'm out of the game, but uh, I'm talking about the, the things that, that you yeah. control. Like I only yes. deal in things I control. I don't, I don't deal with things I don't control. So. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. You mentioned a second ago, talking about day to day and so forth. Um, you know, one of the things that's very important and, and I'm going to ask you about this in a minute is our daily habits, right? It's something that it's a daily routine. It's something that you get accustomed to doing that is uh, because when you have daily habits, you're, you're going to be able to take care of your home much better. But tell me a little bit about some of the daily habits that you feel are really important for everybody. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be a little long winded, right? Because I want I want to. Uh, by the way, I appreciate everybody being here again. Thanks for taking your time out of your day to be here. Right? So I pride myself in, on providing value whenever I interact with people uh, in my life. Right. And, and I want to be uh, transformational in, in somebody else's life. And that's, that's all I really can take with me at the end of my life. Right. So I can't take all the material goods. It just doesn't matter. And I've, I've tried, but, you know, I've, I've been there where I had no no material goods whatsoever, right? And so I so that I'm not necessarily attracted to that. I'm much more attracted to to what what am I leaving behind in in, in respect to the image that other people have of what I did. Did I make a difference? But so so again, just correct. I was I, I was born in Copenhagen, Denmark, yep. and I know I I came over uh, for the World Championship in cycling in '86 and. Uh, Started, uh, got offered a contract, and and which ended up ended up being captain of the third largest professional cycling team in the U.S., which was, uh, you're correct, uh, sponsored by uh, Wolfgang Cox Fargo Restaurant, and we did load up the van with lots and lots of that famous uh, walnut bread that he has, and all this other stuff that every time, right? But uh, uh, I, I came to a crossroad uh, when I was 28 years old. Um, I was, uh, you know, I, I was naive, I guess. And you know, I, I was very, very diligent in training. But at that point, all of a sudden, um, somebody um, offered me something that uh, would enhance my performance, and basically called doping. Right? And I, I remember uh, it was at the end of the season, and I just uh, I remember I, I lived in Manhattan Beach. I I walked for an hour on the beach, and I just was like, you know what? I'm just too smart to that. I just, I just, uh, there's more to life than just that. And and I'd seen my father was a famous cyclist and I'd seen people get cancer and uh, all kinds of issues, right? Uh, so I was like, no, um, I'm going to have to hang it up. Um, and um, so I, I literally, I retired way too early, but I retired from cycling. But I had a, I had a, a passion for, uh, for being, uh, you know, uh, staying healthy. But through Spago, um, I, I ended up uh, getting involved with um, the entertainment Hollywood because I was at Spago restaurant. That's where all the A-list actors and directors and so forth came. And so I, I, I ended up uh, uh, starting to work in, in, in TV and films. Was, I was in a TV show called Dallas. I, I worked in The Aviator with DiCaprio. And I did, um, I, I, I was in Star Trek Next Generations with uh, William Shatner. And so I, so I did I did some good projects, but um, when I, and I was, so I, I basically was, was a, a paid actor for 10 years. But I uh, uh, too um, sad. But uh, I also did a lot of theater, and at one point I got um, my voice got hoarse, and I just was like, okay, you know, I'm a I'm perfectionist. I leave no stone unturned. So I I went to the doctor and say, hey, I got a sore throat. Um, well, what do you have? And back then I didn't know. I didn't know what I know now. I I, I didn't have any degrees in nutrition, and you know, I was just living my life. I'd grown up, had a normal upbringing. And they gave me uh, uh, antibiotics. It, first course didn't go away, so I went back. Said, "Hey, still there?" Gave me a second course, and uh, ended up uh, obviously following the doctor's advice. Ended up being on antibiotics for for seventy days straight, wow. and they took out my tonsils. And um, obviously, that back then I, I had no idea what ramifications that had, but that totally wiped out my immune system, mm. and uh, I. Uh, uh, became um, severely sick, and I literally um, I contracted. Uh, I was I was living in New York, by the way. I was living in Gramercy Park, and I was renovating an Art Deco apartment there. And uh, that apartment was built in, before 1929s. And I was taking the paint off the doorways and inhaled the lead. Oh, okay. so, I got, and so I ended up getting heavy lead and mercury poisoning, and then also uh, contracted something that women 
usually get, which is a candidiasis or candida albicans, which is a yeast infection. But mine was so extreme, it, it penetrated into my bloodstream. Once it's there, it's very hard to get rid of. So long story short, uh, I basically lost everything. I lost my marriage. I lost my job. Um, and I had to um, uh, get out of society. I just I couldn't eat anything. And I was uh, allergic to everything. And my body was just, the systems were just breaking down. And that's why I literally, I moved to California. I lived, moved to Malibu. And I lived in an Airstream trailer for uh, a year with no water, no, no power, no sewer totally off the grid and, but studied and my passion, I'm a book collector. So I got about 1600 books. And then, uh, uh, so one of my passions of course is health. So I got really, really educated on health and uh, then ended up also becoming certified in nutrition from Cornell university. And, uh, and, and so, and one of my sections of, of books is also longevity. So I looked at that. Ended up coming out of that, uh, having um, overcome that um, through um, just doing it myself, right? Once I was diagnosed properly. And then um, uh, then I met Diane. Diane was a strength trainer for the Navy SEALs. She also was a former, she was an Olymp at an Olympic caliber figure skater prior to that. We'd done the hottest adventure race on earth. And, and, and it was interesting, we met online and uh, the, uh, you know, at that point, I'd, it, it was on a website called fitnesssingles.com. And, uh, you know, as I was older, like, I was like, I'm not going to go to bars to meet women or anything like that. Right. So I was like, no, I'm okay. Uh, so what do you, and the cyclist friend of mine said, oh, you know, hey, they got this fitnesssingles.com. Go there and you're going to meet somebody that uh, hopefully is an athlete like you. I said, okay. And I was, by the way, captain again. I'd been, I'd come out of retirement. I was still, now I was racing again at the pro one level again right and that was at 46 years of age and uh yeah. first two dates first two dates was absolutely disastrous uh i walked into the first date and they were they were doing a double martini the woman the girl was doing a double martini for me so that went sideways i had a race the next day i was like okay this is no nowhere and the second date same thing after three bars i was kind of done so i was kind of, yeah, i was done with that but then uh all of a sudden i came across this profile and unbeknownst to me, Diane had had the same experience. She had, one guy said, oh, no, I'm, a, I'm a great cyclist. And he showed up and all he did was ride a beast cruiser. I have nothing wrong with it. <laughs> but again, he stayed yeah. true to his word, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she got really angry. She was a newspaper columnist. And she wrote in a profile, if, you are, you know, if you're not that serious on working out and eating healthy, do not waste my breath. And I looked at that profile, I said, okay, that's my gal, right? So we ended up um, meeting and we've been together ever since. And, uh, and then uh, together we then uh, uh, created a school where we, uh, we became raw food chefs, chef instructors, created a school, uh, brought people in, uh, women with uh, breast cancer, and I IBS and all kinds of issues and helped them overcome uh, these issues, right? And then uh, uh, the arc from that is from, from that where do we go well then we looked at it and say okay um do we want to you know we, we, we were interested both the interest very interested in longevity so do we want to learn from guys in lab coats or do we want to learn from the people that are actually doing it and that's what started our our project right so we we formed a longer healthy life and then we started traveling around the world and uh, that ended up uh, getting to the point where we started speaking all over the world and um, then we then started speaking to medical professionals that can they get continuing educational credits for attending our lecture on longevity. So the long winded answer is back to you is that what, uh, what you're looking at here is like, right, what is longevity? Longevity is habits. It's, it, it's all about habits, right? Then the more bad habits you are, the, the sooner you're going to potentially take yourself out of the game of life and the more good habits you have, um, the more you are making deposit into the to your own longevity bank, so to speak. So, so give me your what do you consider to be? I, I don't want to pin you to one, but let's say give me three important habits you think uh, we should all have. Okay, so so 
there's obviously lots and lots of parameters, right? And yeah. when you when, when we go to these places, what we do is we bring a translator and then we live with the people, right? So we find a cluster of people that are long lived. And uh, you know, so there's multiple people that are over hundred years of age. And uh, yes, you know, in, in there's, there's, they're all over they're in different places in the world. Like then it, it could be in Japan, it could be in Italy, it could be in Greece uh, and so forth. But what you look at is that uh, the cornerstone, the cornerstone of, of longevity obviously is nutrition. Yeah. Hands down. And then um, you also, the second cornerstone is movement. Like, so this is again, um, it, you don't necessarily need to belong to a gym, but it, you, you need to move. And uh, as I said earlier to you, right, when you look at a person, you can always see, you can measure their longevity on the, on, on the, their, the speed of their walk, right? When, when, when people, if, if you're just shuffling along, then you're, you're kind of going downhill there, right? And that's why I love New York because you walk everywhere uh, in, in New York, right? Which is, which is great. Uh, the third thing, which of course is tough when you're in New York, that's relaxation. Uh, that's <laughs> yeah. what you have. You have to implement that, and I always say, I tell people I said if you're not if you don't sleep well like you're not healthy so, yeah so there's a way to gauge that right and then um, the fourth is what we're doing right now uh, that is a community like so there's no like there was a guy in Norway right I mean three years later after he had passed they found him in his apartment right and only because the mail was so high that uh -huh. the mail couldn't get the mail in in the slot right no wow. he had no, he had no community wow. no community. So you said so it's very important that you mm -hmm. get that social interaction, yeah. uh, uh, whatever you do. Right? And then uh, I said one of the main things to finish off this is uh, I was look at five, right? Because uh, purpose. Now your purpose changes throughout your life, right? In your longer, younger part of the life, maybe you're raising your kids, and then like we went to Japan, and there uh, people, the women that were over 100, they were they were literally um, daycare sitting almost for the for the grand 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 kids right and it was it was yeah. wonderful to see. it was a different it was a new purpose for them it was different right it's, it wasn't that purpose early in life but it has changed so uh yeah that's 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 some of the things and if you don't have these right you can have one of them or you want the other it's not going to work it's a checklist you have to have them all otherwise uh, and and that's like when you look at purpose right like, uh, what do you mean by that well another thing is when you like when a when a person that's 100 like on seven, they, they take your hand and they look you in the eye. It's there's nothing else in the world. It's it's all about you. They, you feel it, and it's like wow. They're just totally focused on you. Like and and, and typically what I see is um, if you it's not like the glass is half empty or half uh, half full. Mm -hmm. The glass is overflowing. Like so 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 that brings me to another thing. You talked about habits, right? So when I came to the United States. One of the reasons why I'm the person I am today is I created uh, five mantras. So I created mantras that I that define my life. Right. So no matter what situation I'm in, I will use one of these five mantras. Now I'm from Denmark, so I'm a Dane. So one mantra is there's nothing the Dane can do. So when somebody says that's not possible, I go after. I you know I get it done. Two is you know especially since right like just like now you know life is a relationship. Yeah. Uh, focused uh, environment, right? Um, especially if you if you're in a relationship. Um, second thing, it doesn't cost anything to say I'm sorry, right? Even though I'm right, it doesn't matter. It's okay. You know, just get your ego out of the way, and then and, and that way, you know, it's just that you don't need to win every argument, so to speak, right? And then, uh, uh, you know, why? The other thing is, um, the world is your oyster. Absolutely, right? So we all have bad days, but again. Um, you, you why sell for good when you can be great so every day i try to be one percent better i'm always trying to improve what, what my current environment and, and do that and then uh obviously um, for me huge right and that comes back to attitude is everything attitude like we all get out of bed the same way we have the same amount of time but again there's always yeah. two ways <clears throat> even though a car hits you uh you don't need to get out of the car and tear the other guy's head off instead uh, just maybe that person had a bad day and and so forth like so there's lots of ways to react to that and um so so um again these mantras 
are really, really helpful as well, right? So that's, but that's, it, those are habits because of, it, it's, it's, a, it's a habitual pattern. I keep using them again and again and again, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, you know, it's interesting with centenarians, you know, I think sometimes it's funny as, as I get uh, a little bit older and, uh, uh, you know, I, I realize that I've gained through the course of time wisdom. Uh, it depends what level of wisdom, but the point is that I, I've gained knowledge just by existing, right? And so here we have centenarians who most people, especially younger people, see older people as almost sometimes, oh, that impediment or this person's maybe lost it or this, but, and it's incredible the amount of knowledge and wisdom that they keep stored in their head. And it's, it is a blessing to be able to be able to speak to someone who's, who's lived a long time and really followed, as you said, those habits. Um, tell me a little bit about some of your interactions with, um, what's it, uh, 110 you're, you're plus, about, what are they called? Yeah, that's super centenarians. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're touching about something that's interesting, right? So in, in the United States, we're trying to put, put long-lived people away. We're just trying yeah. to get them out of the way. And, yeah. And so, right? Whereas in, uh, you know, if you go to Japan, it's an honor. It's an yeah. honor to have uh, the longest living person living with you. And they, they literally are fighting over who's going to have this person in their home, right? And uh, so, so it's a completely, completely different mindset. One of the things I would say that uh, uh, I feel blessed about which, uh, is that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm kind of utilizing the, the Japanese model, right, for myself. So I, I've been, you know, as an, I'm an, I'm an entrepreneur and I've obviously done really well. Uh, and then it's afforded me to, to buy a, a large home on, on a private lake and, uh, you know, the, the, the weather here is, is, is incredible. And, you know, I, when, when you live in Europe, uh, California is kind of like the, the, the dream, right? And uh, now I'm, I'm in a position where I'm able to bring my 81-year-old father over. His wife passed, and then now I'm bringing him over, and he has he's going to have completely separate living quarters here. I mean, it's the same house, of course, but that's he is super, super excited about that, right? And that's, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm excited because he's been living his life in Denmark, I gave up my life in Denmark. I left mm -hmm. when I was 24. So there's this vacuum of time that I now kind of can catch up and and, and, and get that rebonding with him again. Right? So, now, yeah. um, that's fantastic, by the way. Congratulations on that in advance. What, um, so tell me, you know, I, let me take a step back. Uh, you know, obviously over the next last 10, 15, 20, 30 years, there's been much more focus on health and and even mental health and, and awareness of, of diet and nutrition and sleep and so forth. But these centenarians and super centenarians didn't have social media back in those days. They didn't have all of that. So I guess I'm curious to know, you know, even going back to when they were 70 and 60, what are some of the things that you find are common traits that many of them have had? So um, it's, it's interesting. Like I could, I could say, okay, just move to, Right now, I mean, move to Acciaroli in Italy. Mm. If, you, if you plant, I mean, it's easy to get hit by lightning if you're in the tree. Right? So, so you're literally putting yourself in the tree. And if you live there, yeah, you're you're probably gonna have a long lifespan. Same thing. I went to Campania Million and in in Italy as well. That same thing there. You know, so there's these pockets where mm. you can kind of position yourself. But here's the problem. If you live in this country, especially if you live in New York or you live in California, uh, you know, you've seen too much. You've seen too much, right? You have to give up your phone, uh, you know, a lot of your car. I mean, I, I went to uh, uh, Simi in, in Greece, and I never forget, I interviewed this long-lived person, and um, you know, the man had never been off the island. There's a little Simi, this is this a little island in Greece, and, and I was like, how do you get around? And he was just clapped his, his legs like my by buying it da, 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 da. he didn't have a car he was he, his gas was overflowing he was i mean it was so positive it was great and he was healthy and stuff like that but he just uh you know walked around right but with completely different um life conceptual uh, how do you conceptualize things like right? so so again uh for me uh it, it's it's a repetitive pattern like you you, you know i I've been to interviewed goat herders. Like they grow up from a, from they were like five years old. 
they are just out there. They start with their father and then they follow along and then eventually they take over uh, the herd. And, and yes, they end up, you know, they, they take their, take their lunch, they have it on the backpack, they take the lunch under the tree and uh, they're gone all day with, 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 with the goats and then they come back. Um, and that's, um, you know, so, so you can, you can, if that's what you want, yes, you can choose that. Right. And, but because of that, it's not monetary to live long is not monetary because no, no. most people that, 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 uh, live long, live long out of scarcity. Right. So here's another interesting aspect. Like, uh, you talk to somebody in, 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 in America and you say, okay, uh, um, do, do, do you eat a lot of animal products? Oh, no, 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 I, no, not really. Okay. Once I, once I do my talks, right. And, and I said, I, I don't know anybody, by the way, I don't know anybody that eats more than 5%, ma maximum 10%, but typically 5% animal protein. If you'd okay. want that, you're out of the game. I mean, you, you may live to 70, 80, but you're not going to live past a hundred, right? You can't show me people. Can't, I mean, yes, you can go to Greenland, uh, where they, they, eat the, the, that's a different, that's a, that's a different animal, so to speak, right? But for the rest of the world, no, doesn't exist, right? So, so again, uh, but conceptualize that. People don't, it doesn't register. So I talked to people, so what, so what did you have uh, yesterday? What do you have for breakfast? Oh, I had some, some eggs, uh, an omelet. I said, okay, what about uh, for lunch? I had a turkey sandwich. Okay, what about for dinner? I think we had uh, uh, lemon chicken. Okay. That's animal products every meal, three times in one day. Okay. So, so that's 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 a bad bad habit right there. Now, are you going to be alive? Yeah. Okay. So, so this is why same thing is movement. We come back to movement. Um, you know, have you ever seen a a, a, a Tour de France rider uh, that lives past a hundred? No. Like, so you can't do extremes. You got to, you got to, you got to, you got to show moderation in that, right? They say, if you ride it to the France, it takes a year off your life. So these are, these are things that everything that I'm, I'm going through here is, is that, right? One of the key words with longevity mm -hmm. is moderation. Moderation, yeah. And so that, that brings me to, 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 to a recent study, right? So there, so we, we traveled around the world and um, then uh, we, it's not every day that a new longevity study comes about. This mm -hmm. is, it's, you know, there's years in between, right? So the most recent study that's of significance, it was called the uh, Chow Initiative. And it stands for the Silento Initiative for Aging Outcome. So all longevity researchers, including me and Diane, we uh, descended on Acciaroli. Right? So, so that's, in, that's in the southern part of Italy. Okay. And uh, what was interesting was it came about because a professor from uh, University of Rome happens to have relatives in Acciaroli. And then, uh, so he, he, he went there. Have you ever seen the movie Cocoon, where everybody lived on? Yeah. It was the same thing in Acciaroli, right? So, so out of 700 people, at the time of the, of the study, every 10th person was 100 years of age. Wow. In the region of Salento, Acciaroli is in Salento. Mm -hmm. And if you want to look it up, just look at the Chow uh, Initiative, like C-I-A-O, just like Chow Bello. Yeah, so, yeah. So, so now, so Silento is Silento's initiative for aging outcome uh, got started because uh, they brought in UCSD and University of Rome, and they did a, it. was a six month study where uh, blood work was drawn, and then uh, they looked at uh, you know the different habits again. Right, we come back to habits. So obviously there was some local rosemary, they had some olive oil, they lived close to the ocean, their community, and um, they were very active. They, they moved around like right? so but but the key here is this this was a new discovery and this is why this is so significant through the blood work they noticed that all the long-lived people there were 100 and older and by the way in the region of silento there were um, um 20 people that were 110. Wow. huge difference between 105 107 to 110. a lot of them fall off before they get to that number right mm -hmm. so that was even japan cannot match that number and then uh so, so through the blood work, they use different uh, markers and uh, they use the biomarker called antimedulin or bio-ATM, which came out showing that all the lung lived people had an extremely proficient uh, microcirculatory system. Now, 
you can look them up, you can Google this, right? And you see the headline of, the, of all the articles says, the key to longevity is microcirculation. And this again, when, 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 when people come to me, oh, you're longevity research. Okay, well, what's the one thing, Michael, I, I, I got to do, right? I said, you got to find a way, I don't care how you find it, but you got to find a way to optimize your blood flow at the capillary level, which is again, microcirculation, right? And uh, with that, I'm going to throw it back over to you. I'm sure you've got other questions. Well, tell me a little bit about the, um, you, you said microcirculation and the capillary level. So for, for well, I'll say us who don't necessarily, uh, aren't completely familiar with the uh, anatomy and so forth, we've got, you know, veins and arteries, but what's, what is a capillary's function? Yeah, so, so uh, it's a great question, right? So in your body, you have 12 systems. And, and as, as, as I explained, Early in life, right? My systems, one after the other, start breaking down. I, I lost my balance. I, there was all kinds of, you know, it's, it, I had profuse night sweats, and my my body was breaking down system by system. So, so all all this all the twelve systems of your body has a functionality, but the driver is the circulatory system. So uh, we now know that the the number one thing that uh, you have to have if you want to live long, is blood flow. Like, and, and look at that. As you age, what's the one thing that, that slows down? Your blood flow. Right. right. So, so, so within your, and most people think, okay, I got, uh, you know, and by the way, your blood, right? Your blood travels four times from, from Los Angeles to New York in one day. It's that busy. Wow. Right? So, so most people think, okay, well, I have a heart, and the heart pumps the blood around in my body. Yeah, you're correct to a certain extent, right? And and you you consist of what? You consist of arteries, veins, arterials, venules, and then capillaries. And uh, so the arteries and and when I talk to a cardiologist, it's very interesting because we always get stuck in the realm of arteries and veins because what do they do, right? Cardiologists they cut you open, and that's that their workspace. And what can they see? They can see the arteries and the veins because that's where you do the stents. That's where you do the bypasses, the balloons, right. all this stuff. Right? Right. But they cannot see the capillaries. So only only 26% of your circulatory system is visible. Like right? that's the arteries and the veins. So so 74% of your circulatory system is the capillaries. So this is why this is such an important discovery. And this is why if you follow the medical world, a lot of the MDs that are uh, publishing books. They're now publishing this study, the Chow Initiative, in their, their study, in the books, right? And so, so again, the capillaries, I can fit multiple capillaries into one strain of hair. Hmm. Only, wow. only one cell can pass through a capillary at a time. Hmm. And, and so, so, so uh, again, when you, when you look at your body, your body is comprised of cells. Like, so even your skeleton yeah. is comprised of cells. And... Um, without getting too specific too scientific here right so just i i keep it very simple like uh, what is it that we need to live long well what what are cells i mean i have fat cells i have red blood cells i have brain cells i got all kinds of different cells by the end of the day a cell is a cell just like uh, you know new york you've got lots of different brands of cars but it's just it needs gasoline it's an air in the tires right. like uh, yeah. you go from a to b so so the cell needs two things to function and that's where in longevity, this is where it gets interesting, right? You function on oxygen and you function on nutrients. Yeah. Those are the two things. Now, obviously a cell poops, so it creates metabolic waste and those toxins need to be removed. I always talk about New York, by the way, and talk about New York City, right? And, and when, when I talk to people about longevity, I said, listen, and, and, and primarily people have bad habits and they're eating the wrong foods and they're not active and Right. Yada yada, all these different things. I said, I said, I said, have you ever been to New York City? He said, Yeah. I said, Okay. Just imagine if all of a sudden they closed the bridges in New York City. You couldn't get into New York City. Right? What would happen? All and you know they already put the garbage out in the end of the night. You see all the plastic bags out there by the side. Right? But what would do? I mean, we had that happen one time in New York, right? Where there were mountains of, 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 of even rats running through the garbage and all this yeah. stuff, right? And I said, that's that's the image I want you to get of your internal. That's that's the inside of you. That's what's happening. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get the garbage out. Like as soon as the garbage, the bridge opened up again, 
and the garbage truck came in and took the trash out, New York came back to life, right? But yeah. for a while, then, New York was, was, was dead in the water, right? So, so uh, again, the same thing with your body. And that's, that's the essence here, right? So, so, again, how do you remove trash internally from your body? There's only one way, right? And that is through blood flow. And that's, that's really the key, right? So, so again, uh, you know, all these different things I'm talking about, that's, it all comes back to, to, to that. You, you have to have blood flow, otherwise uh, it's, it's not gonna happen. Now, I think if we rewound the tape several years, you know, there were a lot of different paths you could have chosen to continue to where we are today. And, uh, but when you heard about this particular company and a specific product, and, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it, it, it is Beamer, which, which we spoke about earlier. I think it, I almost feel like your reaction was almost like dropping your suitcases because you just found the, the, you know, the way to increase the blood flow. And I don't want this to be, this is not meant to be an infomercial for Beamer per se, but more so, I mean, this has been fantastically uh, educational and, and really important because, you know, one of the things that's so important to all of us is the notion that whether we want to live to 100 or not, we want to live longer or as long as. And if we're doing things today that are preventing us from living that extra day, that extra week, month, year, and so forth, then we owe it to ourselves. As you said, we only have one home to use what we can today to you know, uh, lengthen our lives. Tell me a little bit, if you could, about um, less about the company, but maybe more so about what are some of the ways that are available to increase the blood flow, especially at a capillary level. And I, I know there aren't too many, but also tell me a little bit more. What does Beamer's product do and how does it work? Okay, so so again, it's a, you're, you're asking a very, uh, it's, just, it's a fantastic question, right? So I wrote something down, right? Because in, the, in this, if you get this, this is gonna be huge. Just if, if this is the only thing you get out of this talk, it's amazing, right? So, so here's the difficulty right and today people you get an issue you get sick you go to the doctor you walk out that door with what a prescription yeah. right and you take you take a prescription drug and that's what most people do i talk to people that are they that said so you have the issue how are you dealing with it? oh i'm, I'm on I'm, I'm taking this i'm this pill that pill that pill right but here's the problem we know now we know now scientific proven you can look it up down to every studies proven that the key to longevity is microcirculation. Right. So that's what you need to focus on. You somehow, you need to find a way to get, maintain that the health of that. Mm. Now, I knew that. And uh, yes, you know, I eat well, and I, I take really good care of myself, I'm active and so forth. But here's the problem, right? I live in a country that uh, you know, the quality of toxins are everywhere, right? Now, if I go to a little tiny island, Somewhere, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, there's, there is less. It's a different qu quality of, of, of air you get, or you're not, you're not mm. going to get bombarded with as many toxins, right? But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not ready to live there. So here's the difficult. Like the difficulty is that there's no pharmaceutical receptors. There's no pharmaceutical receptors at the microcirculatory level. So I could take all the prescription I want. I'm not going to be able to affect change at the capillary level. Okay, so this is why I've been looking for something that a different way of doing it, right? So so uh, when I was introduced to this, uh, first of all, it is, it's a, this, this is a medical device, right? And, and the way I look at it is, I look at the, the medical side of things, right? And that's why I was impressed with like the number one hospital, for instance, in Europe um, is uh, the NATO hospital in Budapest. And uh, they're, they're fantastic, right? But, but they, they, they use this medical device and they do 350 sessions a day with that. Now it's not wow. disease specific, so just so people come in and yeah. obviously it's the more socialized medicine over there. But, but here's, here's, here's for me, like um, I had, um, here was when I, when this, when, when this came across my radar, um, even though I was eating well and I uh, also was taking good care of myself, for two years I had struggled with a right shoulder issue and I, I, I didn't have full rotation in my shoulder. And I just, I was like, okay. And I, I tried not working out. And I 
you know, I tried every, I went and saw doctors and I didn't want to have surgery. I'd seen other people have the shoulder surgery and I knew what that was going to do. Like I'm not a surgery kind of guy. So, so when, when finally this medical device came around and I understood the science of it, like I, um, I said, well, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot. And I applied one of the applicators around my shoulder. And what well, you know, 12 days later, I had full rotation, full rotation, never had to have surgery. And by the way, for two years, I didn't sleep on the right side. Uh, most days I only drove my left, my left arm. And wow. uh, it, there, was, there was just, I couldn't lift Diane's hand back. I could not lift it. I would be in trouble, right? Because it just would be just yeah. accurating, right? So, um, so that, that, that got my interest, right? So now I, I just, uh, I just purchased this device for personal use. That was all I did, right? But after six months of me and Diane using it, um, we looked at each other and said, okay, um, I mean, knowing what we know now and all the breakthroughs we've had, I said, it's a crime. It literally is a crime if we don't share this with the world, especially since we're in the field of longevity, right? So, so that's why for me, like, uh, it's, it's all it does, this device, it optimizes the blood flow at the capillary level. Like, that's what this device, it doesn't, doesn't do anything else, right? And I always say to people, don't ask me how to fix a car. I know nothing about that, right? But I know how to keep your body at its optimum level. And I, I get checked. And this is what I love. I get, it's not like mm -hmm. I, I never ask you to do something I don't do myself, right? But, I, you know, I go in and I, I get checked and I have all my markers checked and they're always blown away. Wow, right? you know, you're 60 years old. And uh, I mean, your your blood pressure, your, your, your cholesterol, all these different things, right? I just, I'm always, uh, you know, at the top, right? And, and uh, so again, it, it also, one of the other things is, right? And it has a patented sleep program, right? And it, it's not an infomercial for this product, right? I don't care how you get uh, to where you want to go, right? But, uh, but again, just dig in, do your research. The more you look at, at things, right? The more you're going to get to the truth of the matter. But I'm, I'll leave with this. I've used it for... I'm going on seven years of having of using this medical device, and I'm I literally feel like I'm getting younger and younger and younger. Right now, provide I'm still I, I'm I'm active, I eat right, I have community, and I'm on purpose. Like so, all these different things are, are yeah. in, in check, right? So, so again, they, it goes hand in hand. But but here's what's interesting, interesting right? You uh, prior to to kind of getting involved in teaching the science in this, this device. Uh, I was primarily, when we did talks, what was the audience that I had? What, what, what people did I attract? Right? I attracted people that were interested in being super healthy. So they would drink, people, they would drink, they, they would drink green smoothies, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and so forth and that, and, and that was great. For years, that was, that was the audience I catered to, like, and, and, and then, but once I got involved with this, all of a sudden, what I realized was, wow, here I can reach everybody because you can have a person that only eats fast food. They're as unhealthy as they can be. They do no movement uh, and so forth. Right? But again, when you start affecting change at the capillary level, something positive is going to come out of that. It's, you know, it's, it, that's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what level of life you are. Right? And, and again, you 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 talked about athletes. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, like for me as an example, I, you know, I, uh, I I didn't play golf when when I got involved with this, but all of a sudden, all these golfers they're using it because you know. And then I I met with NFL players, I met with uh, the Angels, I met with the Kings, Kings is ice hockey, and all these. It doesn't matter what sport it was, and I got involved with major world champions and olympians right and that's why i said when you start to look at life right let's say you want to be more pr uh, productive in your work right uh well obviously if you have clarity up here and if you don't have a sick day and if you can outwork anybody else right? and you just you have it like that whenever because every all the synapses are firing on your brain you're going to be more productive you're going to become more successful right and that's, that's, so that's the reason that I'm like, I, I do it on my brain. I do it on my, my gut. I do it on my spine. I do it on my prostate tonight. Like, so, so there's diff, all these different areas of the body 
that I'm trying to optimize uh, from a capillary perspective, if that makes sense. Right? So uh, real quickly, tell me, explain to me, if you could just visually, how does it work? It, it literally is, is like a, almost like but that, that's, that's, that, that's the brilliance. That's the, that's the, the attraction fact, right? So yeah. I'm, I don't want to change anybody. The last thing I want to do is, yeah, I want you to continue to be you, right? But uh, you know, when, when I, uh, first off, who, who's a candidate? Who qualifies? Anybody that has blood. Right? So they, you can use it in animals, you can use it in humans. But mm. the key here is this. What I love is this. I, I don't want to change. I want to be. I want to continue being me. Right. But, yeah. but again, um, yeah, I always say to people, I, do you brush your teeth in the morning yeah, and it, it twice a day? Yeah. Okay. I said, good. It's as easy as that. You use it eight minutes in the morning, eight minutes in the evening. Uh, the mat is on top of your mattress. Uh, the sheet is over it, and then. So you know, before you get out of bed, you just do a little session there, and then uh, you do the second session when you go to bed, and then boom, you just press one button, and they start the sleep program. Right? And I said, if you turn off the light at night before you go to bed and you brush your teeth, it's as easy as that. And so the key is this: I didn't touch your day. I didn't change any behavior in you. Right? I can tell people, hey, you gotta drink these green smoothies. Right? Yeah. People do it for a week, they'll do it for a month, right? And then you go back to the old behavior, right? And it's, yeah. it's, it's there's nothing wrong with that. It, it, we're all different, right? And it's, I love that. But uh, what I love about this is 94% of people that use this device, right? Years later, you go back and check, they use it daily because of the value that it it, it, it gives to you, right? So that's, 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 uh, I don't want this to be a, about that, but it is very, very important because it is, it's a, longevity medical device so to speak right well see look and i think sometimes people look at it as um almost like an expense to feel better and they say well i can feel better in other ways and i think it can also be looked at a different way where it's preventing you from feeling like crap it's preventing you from sick days it's preventing you from from just feeling lousy and waking up lousy and that sort of thing so it's not just yeah, making you feel better, but it's also preventing you from feel worse. And I think that, you know, if you put a almost like the opportunity cost to that day that you feel lousy, you know, it's it's makes it completely invaluable. And this is a product that can last for years and years and years. So I mean, to me, it's 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 obviously not an inexpensive item to have, but it, it's almost like you know, I, I sometimes I'll think gee, do I want to spend all that money on these shoes that I wear every day? Well, of course, because I'm wearing them every day or almost every day. So there's certain things that completely warrant. And if there's a way that you can avoid the doctor, avoid the pharmaceuticals, avoid all that st stuff you talked about, and it's not taking any effort other than laying on it or having it on you, it, it makes complete sense. I mean, if you pencil it out, it's over... Uh, ten year period, right? It's it's less than a cup of coffee a day. So it's so that's it's yeah. it's you know again, you bring up an interesting point, right? Because um, uh, there was a there was a study done in in Australia, and this this was a woman. Um, she, so all she did was she worked in hospice. So she yeah. dealt she dealt with men men and women. She saw she saw thousands of people, and uh, again, there were some were rich. Some were poor, some had worked different jobs, one had, some had one job, right? And, and, but what did they have in common? They had one thing in common. They all knew they were going to pass, right? <laughs> so yeah. she had a little journal and she, mm. she, 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 uh, she said, uh, you know, she asked him one question, just one question. Here there are people lying there, they know they're going to die. And the question she had was, and she wrote a book about it, by, 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 right? she said, what, uh, what is your biggest regrets? Mm -hmm. okay. In the top five, there was nothing monetary. Period. Nobody. Yeah. I wish I had more money right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not, right. None of that. Right. Yeah. What's interesting in in uh, at the time of study, it was uh, for for the men. Uh, number one was I wish I hadn't worked as long as as hard as I did. Yeah. Right? Totally, but. Here's what's interesting. The second response, the number two choice for both men and women was, I wish I'd taken better care of my body and my health, right? So you're lying there, 
And again, you can't gain health on the last day of your life. Every day you're either working with your body or against the body. And mm -hmm. that's why, you know, again, when I'm, and you can tell I'm passionate about it, right? And, but I mean, I walk the talk. But if you've ever seen the movie When Harry Met Sally, right? Again and again, you're like, oh, I want to have what he's having, right? But I mean, I'm willing to do the work, right? And this is what, for me, my life, we come back to, I didn't answer the question in the beginning, right? But my life is all about habits. So it's all it's all about those have I'm I'm making these deposits into the longevity bank. I, I have fun, of course, right? Yeah, I will have a glass of wine now and then, and stuff like that. It's not you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not a monk here, right? But uh, but again, I am I am uh, you, know, you know that's just a human condition. Sometimes you go a little sideways, but I am I'm you know I am very very conscientious of what I do on a daily basis, right? Well, I have seen a uh, photo evidence of you holding a beer, so I know it exists. So it has happened, mm -hmm. and I'm pretty yeah. sure you drank it afterwards. And you didn't just do it for the photo. Oh, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So, but, yeah. but look, I mean, I think that's important for everybody to understand is that you know you don't need to be completely locked into something that's uh, almost like a a prison sentence of you have to do this, this, and this, and this to enjoy a, a longer life. I mean, there are many steps you can take, but there's also a few steps that you can take, and I think that. Uh, one of them certainly, you know, it's just so interesting to hear about the, the blood flow, increasing the blood flow, especially at the capillary level, because up until recently, I'd never heard of such a thing. It's not out there. I don't know why it's not out there more, but it's not, you know, and, and it should be. So um, I, I, before we go any further, just real quickly, if any of you have any questions, please, uh, there's a section in there called Q&A that you can throw them in there. Um, I'll, I'll be checking that section. I'm not really good with the chat chat area as much. So if you, um, in the right side there, you'll see Q&A. Feel free to ask uh, Michael any questions you'd like. But now bouncing back to Beamer itself and so forth and how it works, tell me a, a little bit about, I mean, look, I, I know that thousands of athletes have been using it, thousands of, I mean, it's it's been around for a while, but um, what do you think is, is like, some of the main reasons why people don't use it. Because they don't know about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, they think you're talking about the car. <laughs> so, yeah. I think so. That's, that, that's all. It's just, uh, it's just not out there yet. Right. So that's, that's, that I'm, I'm totally fine with that. But uh, again, just like I made some choices early in life, like if I'd known now what I knew back then, I would never have taken all those uh, antibiotics as an example. Right. I just, yeah. um, so, uh, you know, knowledge is power. That's that's uh, really, and um, in it, and you act. It's another angle to this, right? Um, you know, most people uh, will not change until the pain is bigger than the pleasure, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. so that's the thing that you know you 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 rather self sabotage yourself and you will you will hang on for dear life and try not to 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 go there, right? But eventually, right? I mean. You, you just, okay, now I can't take it anymore. And then you, now mm -hmm. mentally you change and now there's, there's, a, there's a, you know, you're open to, but I'm like for me, two years, right? Mentally, I was broken down to where I was about to schedule a surgery, right? And I didn't want it. That's the last thing I wanted to have, but I was like, okay, I'm, because every day it was consuming my mind, this, this shoulder issue, right? And then, uh, you know, so I, I was, obviously I was, I was, I was open to that, right? And I, you know, I'm a pretty good uh, judge of character, like, and I, I have a lot of knowledge, but I still wasn't able to solve that issue, right? So uh, that's that's what's interesting. And then since then, I've obviously had other, there's nothing in life that's stagnant. So that's another thing, right? You, you know, things happen and it's, it's it, it becomes a go-to thing, right? And that's that's another thing that's great. So um, um, again, um, I, I only have, uh, I have, I have a hot stop at 4, uh, yeah, 50, yeah, yeah. right? Because I have another, uh, I got to get on another webinar. To, I'm actually the host. At, uh, <laughs> do you but, know how to? Do you know how to do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, so again, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not the host. I'm, I'm the speaker, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. But, um, but I, so, I want to open it up. If anybody has any questions like that, I want to. I, I, you know, yeah, they'll, they'll you know. throw them in, in a sec. But uh, in the meantime, I guess let, let me ask a, a couple quick things about. Uh, so if someone wants to reach out to you, Michael, and, and, and reach out to you specifically, um, not just about um, more interest in what you do, obviously, and, and of 
the diet and the exercise and sleep and increased blood flow, et cetera. What's the best way for someone to reach you? Well, just, you can go to the website, right? Cause just, uh, yeah, you can't buy anything, but just, um, that's why we put a lot of our information up. It's, it hasn't been updated for a while, right? But um, mm. it's, there's still some valuable information there and you can see, uh, so it's a, so it's saying you want to live a longer, healthy life. So mm. a longer, healthy life.com. And um, that's, a, yeah. Come on, I want to buy something, Michael. Put something on there that I can buy. What the heck? Come on, your recipes, your uh, something. Um, secrets on how to hit the, uh, you know, hit a. Uh, there, there's, there's some recipes. Seven iron. Yeah. How about how to hit a seven iron, uh, you know, the green? We'll, we'll work well, on I, that. Actually. On, on Friday, right? It's not Monday, right? Uh, Tuesday. But on Friday, I actually, uh, I played in, a, in you know, that's another thing, right? So because of this involvement now, uh, with all these golfers i started i took up golf uh 27 months ago so i've been going after it. and of course as an athlete once an athlete always an athlete yeah yeah, yeah of course so now i'm trying to see how far i can take it so i played in a tournament uh in palm springs on friday and on hole six i took my seven iron that you just talked about i took my seven iron and i had a hole in one that's amazing so, so it was, a, it was, a, it was a, and I won the tournament, by the way. So it was, a, it was a good day. Yeah. And, uh, and there were witnesses, obviously, to the whole one. So oh, you were really static. It was, it was that, great. Yeah, that's that's got to be exciting. You don't even need the putter. I don't need that. Thank you. <laughs> I don't need that. No, that's no. exciting. Again, Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, that's it's all. You know, again, life is what you make it, right? So I mean, yeah. just go after it. I mean, for anybody here, right? It's just. Uh, don't don't let anybody say you can't do something right and just uh, that obviously for me i i want to live a really really long life i don't want to ever take any kind of medication right so that's i don't take anything right so this is why i just um even though somebody you know when when, when a doctor writes a prescription right uh, it's not he's not the one that's putting the pill in the mouth you are right and this is this is very important to understand that life is about choices right and there's so many choices out there same thing is i, I tell people i said listen you have an energy producing entity inside of your own cell. Every single cell will produce ATP energy, right? And that's why for athletes, of course, it's important. But if you, through your, through your choices, if you have too much metabolic waste that sits around the cell, I call it the Berlin Wall. Uh, when I was in, lived in Europe, uh, I couldn't go from East Germany to, to West Germany back right. and forth when the wall right. was up. As soon as the wall comes down, it, was, it can go as much as I want. Same thing from a cellular perspective, right? You can eat the best food there is. You can, you know, you you can breathe the best oxygen there is. But if the wall is up, the Berlin is up, it's not going to get into the cell. Right. So the first thing you got to focus on is how can I get that the metabolic waste that's sitting on the cell out of my body, right? And that's why, to me, again, you you got to That's blood flow is the key at the capillary level, right? Because that removes the metabolic waste, keeps taking it out, right? And that's why you just it gets better and better and better for you, right? You still, you still, you still age. Age is, I mean, sixty for instance. I'm sixty. That's just a number, right? I don't feel sixty. I don't look sixty, right? And that's why I don't act sixty. But it's because I'm internally, I'm, I have a different clock, right? And I'm, I'm my cells are, are, are different than most people, right? Well, it's interesting you mentioned the clock thing because I've often told people that I think certain. So we're all on the same clock, a twenty-four hour clock, a year, and so forth. But I think some people actually age 18 hours a day and other people age 30 hours a day. I think that people, you know, whether it's to help, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I've always felt that because we see people that, you know, Michael, you don't look 60, you look 42, right? And people said that about me, and they, I look younger and so forth. But then other people we know look a lot older. So it's uh, well, so, so like, yeah. I went to school in Denmark, right? Yeah. So all of a sudden I get this now that we have in social media, uh, one of my classmates reached out to me on Facebook. And so we had a class reunion. I, you know, I went out of ninth grade and then um, went on to study other things. Right. But the, so I was, so I'd, I'd gone to school with these people since I was seven years old until ninth grade. Yeah. So I went over there. There was only 28 people in the class. And when I, uh, when, you know, we, we, we had a nice long table, we had a dinner, right. And interesting, one person that always was dead. So there was only 27. Uh, okay. impressed. And everybody just kind of walked uh, around the table and was talking about, uh, you know, hey, I'm married, I got three kids, and this is what I do for a living. And 
was kind of because we hadn't seen each other since ninth grade. And I just happened to somehow end up, I became uh, the, the last guy that was going to speak. Right? And I said, well, you know, I, I, I moved to uh, California. I'm a longevity researcher. I give lectures mm -hmm. to doctors. And, uh, uh, you know, then, again, I forget what I said, right? Then uh, as soon as we, we were done uh, and we kind of were just socializing after that, people started one by one coming up to me. 14, 14 people of the people that were in that room had issues, medical issues. And I, I mean, we're talking yeah. issues, right? Yeah, yeah. And again, um, obviously, I, I didn't have any issues. I continue not to have issues, right? But again, it's just, you know, are they alive? Yes. Are they going through life? Yes. Like there's just, but there's all kinds of different levels how you can go through life, right? And that's where you've got to ask yourself, what level do I want to be at? What what do I want to, how do I, like I wake up in the morning and when I'm done with my routine, right? I feel like a rock star. And just every day is, is an incredible day, right? And I'm blessed with, with lots of, I don't need caffeine. I don't need sugars. I don't need chocolate. All these different things like that most people, right? They, they do because I, you know, you hold the highest level of cellular intelligence of any any species on earth, right? All I'm doing is just tapping into that cellular intelligence and then obviously providing the cells with, with the right building blocks, right? To go through life. So, uh, um, That's yeah. Phenomenal. Thank well, you. listen, I, I know you got to jump in a second. So I, I just want to thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, this has been incredibly fascinating, very um, educational, certainly for me and I'm sure for the audience. And, uh, you know, I think the one, one quick final question and then I'll, I'll let you roll. Um, you ready for this? Yeah. Um, I need to hear from you three people you would love to have dinner with, alive or dead. Um, and that would be uh, Norman Walker. Um, and wow, that's a tough one. <laughs> that's a tough one. Uh, so, um, I'm, I would have to think about that because it, that's, that's all right. You're off, you're off the hook. You have to yeah. think about it. You know, it's funny because most people will come back with a sort of, you know, whatever Oprah or Obama or something, whatever it is. And I always use, I'm a history guy. So I would say, well, I'd be fascinated with George Washington or even Jesus or, you know, something like that, maybe more historical, just to see what it was like to live in that time or hear the stories and so forth. But, um, it's always it's always interesting to hear what some people come back with. You know, I, I'd say, well, look, I, Paul McCartney, I think would be pretty amazing to, you know, that sort of a thing. But uh, you know, it's 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 a it's a fascinating question. Some people are. I mean, I didn't mean to put you on the spot like this, but sometimes. No, no, no. Yeah. I mean, I'd probably I'd love to maybe meet uh, Bobby Jones, who was a yeah. legendary uh, golfer, right? But then, yeah, yeah. I don't know who the third person would be, right? So. All right, we'll leave it at that. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, Michael. Absolutely. And I hope everybody got some and value out of this. Thank you again for your time. Take care. Bye -bye. Thank you.